Hi there everyone, Russ Douglas 222 and uh, got a, a new rifle test and this really is a new rifle. In the nice case, I'm gutted I've got to give this back, but it's not FAC so I wouldn't really want to keep hold of it, but I would. Um, so this is the shiny new FX Maverick. This, this is the compact. We've still got a 500mm barrel from where you insert the 22 shot 177 magazine and that 22 shot mag really helped when I did the chrono test. It took a long time that. Only 300 cc's only except I've never seen results like this before. I did take off the knurled cap and I added a 177 Weird Oak silencer or moderator, moderator for the chrono test and when I was doing zeroing out in one of my permissions barns locally because this is one of the downsides of the, the Maverick Compact. The 500mm barrel ends 25mm before the end. There's not a lot of sound moderation. There's a little bit of a bark when you fire it. So if you're buying a Maverick Compact, I would definitely recommend a short Hug It moderator or Donny FL, whatever you, whatever's your taste because there's not a lot of sound moderation from the shroud. But if I hold this out to show you, and I'm going to get the camera around in a minute to show you some details, but that is so light, that's six pounds it weighs, unscoped. It's, you can almost use it as a pistol, obviously. It's unscoped, but six pounds for a side lever action air rifle that at exactly 11.50 foot-pounds average I got 330 shots, 15 22 shot magazines out of this bottle before they started dipping below 11.5 foot pounds. The entire 330 shot spread was only 20 feet per second, and the standard deviation had crept up to five. This is an amazing piece of kit. I love it. We have the manometer pressure gauge for the 300cc bottle on the right. We have the fill port on the left, it's a standard Forster connector with a little Delrin cap and there's a small blue particulate filter on there. So, snap clicks on, but I wouldn't want to lose that, obviously. I've also done various measurements comparing the riser rail to my Wildcat and the Maverick's riser rail from the centre line of the bore to the top of the Picatinny rail castellations is about, there's about three mil higher. Three mil, it's not a lot. So we have Picatinny rail on the top, on the razor rail. We've got seven slot Picatinny rails on the right and left. And I've got other, other reviews and other articles coming up on this subject. If I had one of these fellas, I'd have my PARD 008 LRF on the top. I'd have my a compact bracket on the left side so that the IR torch wasn't interfering with me adjusting the focus on the pad and I'd be using an IR torch simply to get extra range and also to, so that the, the battery, the, the trusty 18650 battery on the pad would basically last all night. Because I'm doing YouTube, when the pad's battery gets down to one bar, you can get audio interference, especially when you start using the LRF while it's on one bar. So. I'm going to do more and more of my videos, pest control videos, with an add-on. And I've got another just arrived today, thanks to Andy at Ludicrous Lumens. I've got some more IR torches to test for you. So uh, we're very interested to see how they perform down at the Stonehaven Harbour and also out on the permissions. So that's all to come. So anyway, back to the Maverick. We have underneath, on the underside, we have a six-slot Picatinny rail for accessories and let's just say straight away there we go this is the bipod i've reviewed previously from customhunting.equid.com cracking bipod this is an amazing piece of kit because it's non-fac because i'm in the uk and this is not on my ticket this is a loaner rifle for review thanks by the way to gary at sportsman gun center you're a star uh, and thanks to Harry and Jonathan for answering my questions. I've been picking their brains while writing articles on this fella. So it's a double reg system, which, and there's the adjuster for one of the regs. 
and basically the plenum has been swapped around. If you watch Matt Dubber's videos on Airgun Hunting SA channel, you'll see he explains for non-FAC rifles, they've actually swapped the power plenum around with the second reg would normally sit here. And it basically gives you a lower back pressure, which is more efficient for sub 12 foot pound air rifles. So I recommend you check out that video. So we have accessory rails left and right and underneath. We have side lever cocking, Wildcat style, which is superb. Thanks to the double reg and the lower reg pressure at the back, we've got fantastic consistency and phenomenal shot count. This is 330 shots from a 300cc bottle is amazing. It's just like mind blowing. But I'll tell you now, on the side of the action, it says uh, maximum fill pressure 250 bar. The boffins at Sportsman Gun Centre who deal with FX have assured me better to fill to 220 to 230 bar between those two pressures because you're simply going to preserve your eggs and they're going to last a lot longer. Best not to fill to 250. When I did my chrono test, it was straight after I got the rifle a week ago and uh, I wasn't aware of this. So I won't be filling any of my FX rifles over 230 bar. Lesson learned. Always good to speak to the experts. It's just, it just shoulders phenomenally. Pointability is amazing. Six pounds all in. There'll be a separate video coming on the Eagle Vision Cam 108 MOA rail this week. And when I, I've had this rifle without the bipod, but with the 108 MOA rail and with the PAR 008 LRF, seven and a half pounds. There are bullpup rifles in the UK that are nine pounds without anything else on them. Granted, there's not a lot of moderation. You need a compact moddy on the end, but this fella, it's phenomenal. You have a reg gauge at the back. So when you're keeping an eye on your bottle gauge, basically you're out of air when your bottle gauge gets down towards the pressure of your reg gauge. I'll bring the camera around and I'll show you some uh, more details. Oh, and by the way, there's a link down below to the Flickr album where you'll see lots of photos and links to where I got accessories like the QD bipod, an LRF that I've had on here, the Black Sun Dark Engine, VCSEL IR torch, and the adjustable mount. And I do have another video coming very shortly comparing two different IR torch adjustable mounts. So the captions under the photos in the Flickr album include links to, to wherever I got the kit so you can look for yourself. With the rifle, you get a manual, which includes maintenance, looking after things, adjusting the rear butt pad, which I'll show you in a second. Changing caliber, um, trigger adjustments, magazine loading, charging the rifle, all the usual stuff. I've also put photos of the whole of this in the Flickr album. And you get with the rifle a single magazine, 22 shot in, the, in this case for 177. And this is your, your fill adapter for your Forster connection with a thread on the end. So I'm sure by now you've already gathered that I'm very, very impressed with this rifle. With a 50 centimeter barrel, the whole rifle's only 70 centimeters long or 27 and a half inches in old money. The safety is on the right hand side. Granted, it's quite close to the shoulder. And the other thing is the safety is a nice cocking indicator as well, because it won't go fully on unless the rifle is cocked. If I'm in the paddocks after dark and I'm lining up on a rabbit and I'm thinking, oh, hang on, did I cock the rifle after my last shot? The safety is silent. If it won't go fully on, like as here, then I'll know that the rifle's not cocked. If their safety goes vertical, the rifle's cocked. Although this really comes into its own with the FAC versions, we have the Wildcat Mark III style power selector at the back. You read it at the bottom, so it's on seven at the moment. The golden rule is you only adjust the power adjuster when the rifle is uncocked, because otherwise, the hammer spring would be under tension. So you've got from one to seven, and then if you put it on to adjust, for some reason, if you wanted the rifle to be exactly of 8.5 foot pounds or 6.3 or whatever, then you can, you can fine tune the hammer spring, line the dial up with adjust, pop a one and a half mil Allen key in and adjust away. I would say that the adjuster really comes into its own 
on the FAC versions. Full power, number seven, I was getting exactly 11.5 foot-pounds, which is about 20 feet per second short of the legal limit. And then the opposite, number one, I was getting about seven and a half foot-pounds. All the details of that will be in my article. And something else I should mention, if you buy a non-FAC Maverick, you can get it upgraded to FAC power, but you cannot get them downgraded because basically we believe in the eyes of the law once a firearm, always a firearm. You can decock the rifle, pull the lever back, hold it, and then release the safety, release the trigger, and slowly let the side lever go forward. So it can be decocked. I, I prefer to fire a pellet into the ground if I'm out and about, if for some reason I want to decock the rifle, because it's best so you know there's not a, a pellet up the spout. Regarding cocking effort, I measured that at two pounds on the lowest power level, seven and a half foot pounds and the cocking effort only rose to three pounds at the full 11.5 foot-pounds. The trigger is uber adjustable and at all the different power levels, trigger pull remained very consistent at one pound eight ounces or 680 grams. Superb trigger as always, FX triggers are pretty superlative. So any criticisms of the Maverick? Well, I would say Moderation is not great, so you definitely need a compact moderator. The cheap piece, it's not soft touch, but it, it's kind of warm to the touch. But mine comes in from, from the right hand side, and sadly, there's no uh, left side loading option for self pause. So lefties are not catered for, I'm afraid. My only other regret about the Maverick is I don't get to keep it. This is one superb piece of kit. If I didn't already have a Wildcat, thanks to the very impressive shot count with the dual regs, I would rather have one of these in 177 non-FAC than a Wildcat because the double reg system is just amazing. And we do have accessory rails for bipods, for laser rangefinders or torches. So this is one superb piece of kit. Oh, spot on. That one's high. Was that in the first pellet hole or the, in the bull? That's in the bull. <clears throat> on goes the moderator. And I'm hoping this phone will pick up the difference, should there be one. That's a lot quieter. Anyway, that'll do me for today. So, upshot is, FX Maverick, cracking rifle, I'm just a shame I have to send it back. <laughs> right, anyway, now to go and recover everything, and pack up and go home. Thanks again to Sportsman Gun Centre for lending me this, thanks Gary, and uh, thanks to you all for watching. I've got more videos coming up very soon and I've got some new gun exclusives and some more kit reviews. For example, this is a prototype of the Eagle Vision Cam 108 MOA rail coming very soon to this channel. Thanks for watching.